So I was today years old when I found out what a sundown town is. Apparently a sundown town is a town where it's the residents are only white. Okay, you can work there if you're a person of color in the daytime, but when the sun sets, you need to be out of there. And if you're not, you can risk being killed beaten arrested ran out of town or even lynched and i also heard sometimes the cops don't even intervene if a white person is doing something to you because you're not supposed to be out there after the sun sets anyway if you're caught driving out at night through a sundown town and you're a person of color you're not safe so before you take any trips please do your research on sundown towns ever heard the phrase be in before the street lights come on the generational trauma passed on that's where that came from <laughs> Oh, so fabulous. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to the channel once again. It's your girl Dumebilia. If this is your first time coming across my channel, you're welcome. I do hope you decide to subscribe. And if you are a returning subscriber, you guys know that I love you. It's so good to have you here. Welcome back. Um, first of all, you guys, thank you for all the love on my videos. And if you're a new subscriber, thank you for subscribing welcome to the family so today we're going to be talking about sundown towns i actually came across a clip on tiktok that made me just start digging further down the rabbit hole so um when i was doing my research i was surprised to find out that there are some black americans who don't even know about sundown towns and the fact that we have people who were born and bred in america that haven't heard about sundown towns is just like it's mind-blowing to me because this is an information every black person needs to know because it might just save your life so i thought it's a good idea to make this video and just in case you don't really know what sundown towns are this is the video that explains it did you know that at one point there were towns in the united states that were considered sundown towns additionally if you were african-american and you were going to go on a road trip with your family you would be unwise to leave your home without this handy book with you. So you're asking, what is a sundown town? What is that? Here you go. A sundown town was a town that took steps to ensure that it remained all white. And a lot of these towns would have signs basically warning people of color that if they were found in this town after the sun went down, they can't promise that they'll be able to leave again. Now, as you can see here, there are some exceptions. So if that town had a, a nanny or a butler or a maid that was African-American, then of course they lived there, they were allowed to remain. However, if you were just say a black family pushing through or you decided you wanted to purchase a house in that town, absolutely no, no. Now one may think that these sundown towns were primarily in the American South. However, that is inaccurate. These sundown towns existed all over the United States, and some even existed as far north as New Jersey. So, are you curious as to whether or not you live in a sundown town that was historically a sundown town? If you are, you're in luck. You might be able to find out. The IRL to the website here will tell you whether or not your town was considered a sundown town at some point. Now, these sundown towns were not formed legally. Um, the government did not form these towns. These were towns that were formed by the community members themselves. So it's very possible that your town could have been a sundown town. However, it wasn't recorded as such. So keep that in mind when you're looking. This particular area is about a good maybe 10 or 15 minutes away from where I grew up. And I can confirm that there are absolutely no people of color living there. It's a very, very, very secluded and small area um, right by Indiana. So when I looked and found out that this place was potentially or was considered a sundown town, I'm like, I knew it. But take a moment to take a look at some of these towns. You may be surprised so after watching that video just in case you still don't know how serious it gets i have a clip which is actually the clip that led to me doing this whole video in the first place this clip is by a white woman whose family is from one of these sundown towns so she narrated the kind of things that goes down there let me roll her clip now when i tell you it was heinous i'm gonna have to be careful how i word this so that i don't get in trouble but i think it needs to be said because i am sick and tired of hearing people say that people of color just need to get over it already because it was so long ago no the f it wasn't my father remembers his father raising hunting dogs that he would rent out on the weekend for hunting parties only these weren't regular hunting parties 
These big bubbas would set up these almost lemonade type stands during the week and sell these little cards for like, I don't know, a nickel, 25 cents. They were person of color hunting licenses. And everyone who bought one during the week, they would gather together on the weekend with all their trucks and they would round up as many people of color in the surrounding areas as they could find, turn them loose in the woods and set the dogs after them. There are people alive today whose family were hunted down in the woods by dogs and they raised their children to have a well-earned distrust of white people and of police officers because I guarantee you any of the police officers that weren't wearing the hoods were turning a blind eye. This town, Vider, Texas, at one time, I believe was known as the most racist city in the United States. It was a sundown town. They had a billboard that said, person of color, don't let the sun set on your ass. And anyone who was not white knew you don't drive through Vider after dark. Even truckers would avoid that route if they weren't 100% certain that they could, could make it through before sundown because God forbid they had a blowout or some sort of uh, mechanical trouble in Vider, Texas after dark because they had citizens and police officers patrolling looking for them. If you were in Vider, Texas after dark and you were not white, you probably wouldn't be seen again or at least you wouldn't be seen in one piece. hard for me to talk about. The library, the library sold t-shirts with rifles across it that said, people of color, we're ready for you. The Klan marched down Main Street openly and with full support of the municipalities and the people until 1985. 1985. You guys, when I watched that video, I'm not going to lie, it gave me chills. So you guys see when black people are talking about generational trauma and when black people are talking about what they endured, people don't understand. And the fact that there are still towns that uphold these values till today, till the day 2023 in America, the land of the free, that says a lot, doesn't it? So at this point, I'm just going to go right ahead and play some videos by black people talking about their experiences in sundown towns. Some of the clips are by white people as well, but they were talking about their experience of sundown towns while riding with black people. So, yeah. So, uh, Carolina, say hello. She's enjoying her afternoon walk. I don't remember when I learned the term sundown town. Um, but I do remember my first experience with one. Uh, 20 something, almost 20 years ago, I'm leaving uh, my technical school, graduating. I'm fully in the Air Force and I have a truck so I could go home. I could drive myself home and leave from Texas back to Mississippi. So I'm driving from San Antonio. I'm so, I'm so happy I get released from training. No more reporting statements, no more 341s or whatever that little form that we have to keep on us at all time and whatnot. And I'm going home to see my mama. So, Mom, I made it. I'm in the Air Force. And so I just randomly got released that day. Immediately packed up my truck and hit the road. I did not eat that day. So I'm about mm, five hours east of San Antonio, just east of Houston. And I was like, man, I am on my last calorie. And I stopped, pull off I 10 in a little town, called, I think it's called Vidor, Vidor, V I D O R, Texas, Vidor. And I stop into a McDonald's, and I tell you, the music stopped as soon as I walked in that McDonald's. And this is right after uh, the sun had gone down. And everybody stopped what they were doing, and everyone in there was staring at me. Customers, employees, the manager stuck their head out the back, and I asked for some food. And as a former McDonald's employee when I was in high school, I have never seen food be delivered to a customer that fast. I'm fairly certain they just gave me somebody else's food so I can get my, you know, 
black ass out of the uh, restaurant. It was the most awkward, painful situation I have ever been in. And keep in mind, I've been in the Air Force a little over six months at this point, so I kind of forgotten that you know America is a really bad place, and some places are worse than others. And you know, so I just took that food promptly, threw it away, and I stayed hungry until I made it to Lafayette, Louisiana where I stopped to get food. And, and all the times that I've gone back and forth, up and down I-10 over the last 20 years, I still do not stop in that town, and I don't gas up or get food until we hit Lafayette. So, now you know. I actually been to a sundown town. It was actually my eighth grade year in middle school, right? And I was the only girl, black girl, on our basketball team at the time. So we had a basketball tournament in Vega, Texas. So I had a basketball tournament in um, Vega, Texas. And I didn't know anything about Vega, Texas before going there, anything like that. So immediately, um, we're going into the school for our basketball tournament. And my friend is all holding on to me, like, hold on, like, you know, like all over me. And I'm just like, girl, why you owe me? And like very protective, like a kind of protective kind of thing. And I, at that point, I did not realize I was in the sundown town area. But when we first entered the city of Vega before we got to the school, I did see a sign outside that says, Welcome to Vegas, Texas, no colored people out at night. Then I seen like on business windows as we were going down the street and things like that, I had seen like coloreds and whites. Now I'm looking at this stuff, but I'm like, I cannot believe my eyes are seeing what I'm seeing. Like it, it, scarred me for like pretty much and i'm just like there's no way that this shit still exists i'm thinking in my head should i even be here but back to the tournament right we walk into school there's nothing but white students i don't see not one black person in sight i'm the only black person there and i am the black girl on the team so my friend is like sticking beside my side real hard and i'm like girl what's going on she was like well this school like i heard it's kind of racist things like that that's what she told me so it clicked i was like i'm in a fucking sundown town so we're playing our basketball game whatever i'm not for sure if we won that game or not but i know i heard comments from the stands while i was playing saying oh that black girl this that black girl that i can't really for sure remember what they were saying but it, they were talking about my skin complexion yeah but definitely after um i left that basketball tournament it kind of scarred me for life and i remember it like very like seeing the colored like that was my first encounter with a sundown town like straight up and it scarred me for life that towns and people like that still exist like it's it's crazy but i tell my co-workers this you need to know what a sundown town is and to my black people if you guys are going to be traveling to places you need to make sure that you do your research to make sure that you're not passing through an area that's a sundown town okay for your safety because we still have ignorant people out here who want to be back in in those times and they just don't want to face the fact that we're finally free okay so this is not meant to cause any offense between my friends or colleagues or future friends that live there but uh arkansas first of all between kansas and you one of y'all got it wrong and i don't think it's kansas seriously the one and only time i've ever been to arkansas i felt like i stepped into a wrong turn movie so we were driving to houston from detroit more than a 20 hour drive by the way we had just driven down through missouri where we slept in a car in a walmart parking lot after witnessing people duke it out over god knows what i mean it's walmart you just don't ask questions so i was relatively well rested but about an hour into the drive we made it into arkansas and the car decided it needed gas now, mind you, I'm the only non-melanated person in the car, and we're somewhere we've never been to in the rural south, so by the time we got to this gas station, I, by default, drew the shortest straw and had to go inside to buy the gas. So we pull up to this gas station, which was all dirt and no pavement, and those old school pumps, just something that none of us have ever seen aside from TV. I mean, like, we don't have, like, dirt road gas stations in Detroit. So I reluctantly get out the car and make my way past the door that was literally falling off the hinges to go inside to pay for this gas. So I walk up to the counter and I'm being stared down by this cashier and I'm only talking about his looks because it's like to paint the picture. But he had this like thin long hair that was down to his shoulders that was like bald on top and only like a few teeth. Now I'm not a person who judges by appearances at all but I'm judging this man. The first words out of his mouth before I can even ask for gas is, what are you doing here with them in these parts? What do you mean by that? Now my first instinct was to throw hands, but given the fact that our car was running on fumes and I did not know when the next gas station was gonna pop up, all I wanted to do at this point was give this man my little funky $30 and get me and my friends up out of here. At this point I was afraid for their safety. By the way, this man was talking and I was not taking any chances. So I pay for the gas and as I'm about to leave, he says, best hurry up, it's about to storm. Wouldn't wanna be stuck around here when it's dark. 
So at this point, I'm definitely taking his words as a threat. So I walk out, I fill up, and we get the hell out of there. But before we get too far, this insane fog starts rolling in. It's like so thick, we can't even see out the front windshield. So we drive slow, and eventually we had to pull into this Taco Bell parking lot when the fog got replaced by this torrential rain. Eventually the rain stopped and it was replaced by another round of fog, but at this point it was also dark, so the four of us had to sleep in a Ford Focus until it was less foggy and bright enough to drive again. Unfortunately, we didn't make it to the sunlight before things started to get weird again. We were woken up by three people banging on our windows, yelling things that I will not repeat. They weren't doing any more than that at that point, but all I could think of was what the clerk at the gas station said to me earlier, and that was enough for us to not stick around. We started the car, we peeled out of the parking lot, and we drove from that point all the way to Houston without stopping. That was like eight, nine years ago, and none of us have ever been back ever since. So, uh, yeah. Arkansas. So my baby mother sent me this video and I knew immediately that I needed to make a stitch of this because of some shit that happened with me, my sister Miracle, and a friend of mine, Val, that went down to Florida for a funeral of one of our mutual friends. Now to drive down to Florida, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. On the way back though, that's when shit gets weird. Now I'm driving like an early 2000s Ford Focus hatchback and it has a lot of engine issues because as a traveling musician, I have put this mother through the ringer. One of the tubes in the engine is split open, causing the engine to overheat and damn near blow up on us. So we needed to find a Jiffy Lube or some kind of mechanic shop to pull into to get this shit fixed ASAP if we were going to make it home at all. Now, this is my first time in Alabama, and unfortunately, the place that we pulled into happened to be a fucking sundown town. Fun, right? Now, unfortunately, we weren't going to be able to get the car fixed because the part that we needed uh, to replace wasn't readily available and we had to stay there overnight while they waited for a part from a town over to get to us. When we found that out, this white man who seemed very concerned about our being here and two black gentlemen who happened to work in there as well informed us that we were in a sundown town and that it would not be safe for us being there at dark. They then told us that the one place that would be safe for us in the event that we couldn't afford a hotel would be this Walmart about two miles down the road uh, because for whatever reason, that Walmart just happens to be like a safe spot for everybody there. It just seems where everybody just goes, no racism. So they were like, if you can't afford a hotel, go stay there. Now, unfortunately, our car really wasn't meant to make that journey. While we got there, we realized that if we stayed there too long, we might not be able to get back to the Jiffy Lube in the morning. So we then ended up having to drive back to the town that we weren't supposed to be at and stay there until the morning so we could get the car fixed. Very bad idea. That entire night, we were both harassed by cops and random white people that kept driving past our cars when they realized it was black people staying in there, calling us all kinds of names that I can't repeat on here because of TikTok guideline violations. Now, I'm just a black kid from Baltimore with anger issues, so my first initial response is to start swinging on everybody, and I did have my yad mean in the car, so I was like, you know what, I'm probably about to go crazy. But then, you know, uh, logic and my, my, my friends kicked in and reminded me that we are in the middle of Alabama where I will probably not make it out alive if I decide to do anything drastic in this situation. Needless to say, it was a hard night and I don't think any of us slept that night. Uh, as soon as we were able to get back to that Jiffy Lube and get that part uh, open, we got the fuck out of there immediately. There were plenty of times that night where I did not think we were going to make it out of a bad Alabama alive. And yes, every person that was raised us in Alabama had that look. And y'all know the one that I'm talking about. That was my first and last time in Alabama. And I promise you, unless somebody knocked me out and dragged me there by my fucking ankles, I will never go back to that state again. Yo, let me tell y'all as quickly as I can about my night in a sundown town. 2022, a sundown town. So I get a load going to a particular city in Texas. And I'm like, okay, well, let me head on over here and drop this off. They're going to pay me this much. That's perfect. I like that. It's a quick 200 miles. Make it quick. You know, whatever the amount was. Great. Cool. I get there. And I look at the exit. I'm like, wait a minute. It took me to exit 861A. For those who don't know, it's a place called Vidor, Texas, V-I-D-O-R, V-I-D-O-R. I'm like, uh-oh, I heard stories. Like pretty much everybody I know in Texas that's black tells me, do not go to Vidor, Texas. I'm like, okay. Yet here I was in Vidor, Texas. My load didn't deliver until this morning. This is from the perspective of yesterday. Didn't de deliver until tomorrow at 8. It was like 530 so 
I get to the place. I'm not giving names of companies or anything like that. But I, while I'm driving to the place, I see trailer parks. I see a bunch of Confederate flags. I saw a doll of a black man. It was just a doll wrapped in a Confederate flag hanging from a tree by its neck. That's the type of stuff I saw in Vider, Texas, which led me to believe that the reputation was fairly earned. I get there, the security guard says, oh, um, hey, we got a code red. The guy gets on the phone, he's like, hey, I can't, you know, I don't want to be responsible for this guy's safety. Let me go ahead and find somebody because we stopped taking loads at four o'clock. But I'll get somebody over here from the other side of the plant. Tell them to hang on. So we, so I hang on. I'm doing what I got to do. Finally, somebody comes by about 15 minutes later. The guy said, let me hurry up and get you unloaded. He quickly, quickly, quickly gets me unloaded. And he said, dude, you might want to get up out of here as soon as possible. We're at sundown. You want to leave here now. Don't stop until you at least get to Beaumont. I was like, okay. He was like, no, seriously. It's, it's a, I said, well, what about the police? Why aren't the police there? Police turn a blind eye. I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do what you said. He said, yeah, man, I don't want to see you get in any trouble. So I went ahead and I um, took off, headed to Beaumont. I went to the Petro in Beaumont, slept there, and I had my um, my Armalite Rifle 15 with me, slept with a couple extra magazines. But I'm safe, y'all, but that was my night in the sundown. I had my own experience in Biter. I was coming back from Oklahoma. My, I was visiting my niece up in Oklahoma. And on the way back to Texas, you, you pass through Vider. This Orange, Texas, then there's Vider, then there's Beaumont. So I, I didn't think I had enough gas to make it to Beaumont, so I stopped in Vider. I had no idea that people that looked like me were not invited to that city or, or not liked in that city. I had no idea. So I pumped my gas first. And as I'm walking up to the, to the um, convenience store, I noticed the clerk was on the phone. Well, I mean, I just thought, well, maybe someone's calling to see if they have a certain item in before they go down there. Never knew that I was the whole reason he was on the phone. So there was a guy at the counter, and then a guy passed me. He went up to the counter. So eventually it just came down to me and the guy in there, and I was like, uh, sir, I'm here to pay for the gas. And so uh, he didn't really say nothing to me. So I looked, there's a little, you know, those little things you can pull your number, like number 15, you're up next. But there was one of those, as I walked in the store, I seen it, so well, I saw walk back, I said, well, maybe I got to pull a number or something. I mean, hey, I didn't know. <laughs> and so, like I said, it, it was just me and him in the store. So as uh, I said, I'm here to pay for my gas, so I started walking towards the counter and I gave him the uh, the money for that he gave me my change and about that time when I turned around I noticed the officer was coming in to the to the store and he had his hand on his gun so I'm like okay well maybe this guy was getting robbed so I never knew I was a problem I wasn't raised to see people of uh, any kind of status you know even at my job I, I hold the highest position at my job. And I don't even see titles. I don't care about titles. We're a team. My parents didn't raise me to see a person of, as a color. They raised me to see a man as a man and a woman as a woman. And not a black man, a white man, a white woman, black woman, Asian. I wasn't raised that way. To all my melanated individuals out there who do a lot of traveling on the road like myself, you should know what a sundown town is because believe it or not, they still exist. And how do I know this? Because I've been through one. BuzzFeed did an entire article about my experience, which I would like to share with you all. Now, for those of you all who don't know, these are towns that African Americans are not allowed to be in after a certain time because it could get bad for them. Back in 2020, I went to Devil's Bathtub. Devil's Bathtub is located deep in the southwestern portion of Virginia. Now, as you're on your way there, you're going to pass through poor neighborhoods that have nothing but rebel flags flying high. And you have a lot of one-way roads that have no street lights or cameras. At one point, I thought to myself, damn, I could easily get and no one would ever know. Now, obviously, nothing happened to me. But as we were leaving, we took the scenic route back home. I remember traveling along Route 119, stopping at a gas station. The cashier was like, you must not be from around here, huh? I was like, nah, I'm just passing through getting gas. She was like, yeah, you best not be around here after a certain time. This is a sundown town. Now, I don't think she had bad intentions. I think she was just looking out for me. But that was the day that I learned what a sundown town is. And they still exist. 
Now, they might not be listed on the books, but the ideology still remain the same in those towns. Yes, sundown town. I've had the misfortune of running across one sundown town in my entire life. And as I was rolling in, I said, you know, such and such town limits. Underneath it, it said, this is a sundown town. I didn't understand what that meant. My passenger, he started freaking out. Like he was freaking out and he wanted to turn around and leave. And I didn't understand why. And then a little bit later, it came across another sign that said, N-word, do not let the sun set on your black ass or you will be swinging in the morning. I turned around and left real fast. Does that explain to you what a sun downtown is? I cannot imagine being in some of those situations those people talked about. The fear, like gripping fear, the fact that something could happen to you and in quote, they will feel justified for doing it because in quotes, you have been warned because you knew it was a sun downtown. And the fact that they even stated that the police very likely will not do anything to help you in that situation. It grips me with fear. And I know for a fact that if for any reason I find myself in a place like that, in any place whatsoever, and I look and nobody there looks like me, like I can't see anybody that looks like me, and then I'm getting stares and this feeling of animosity or this feeling that I don't belong, I know what to do. I'm going to get my black self out of there. Survival instincts kick in, okay? When I was watching these videos, I went to the comment section and I saw people say that is where the saying, when the street lights come on, you make sure you're back at home. That African-American elders say to their kids that that is where that saying originated from because the street lights come on during sundown, like when the sun is going down. So once the street lights are coming up, you get your black self back home and they also stated after watching that video about the woman talking about her family that raises dogs for hunting black people someone also commented that that's why a lot of black people don't like dogs because dogs were also used to hunt black people and stuff like that i don't know what you guys think about that is it true let me know in the comment section if anything this just goes to show generational trauma like a lot of things that black people do to this day can be traced back to the generational trauma that our ancestors have endured and that's just really sad the fact that even till now 2023 a lot of these things are still happening so i thought it would be good to share this video to kind of educate people who might not know and for us two who are watching to drop our comments in the comment section because i will be reading and i'm sure a lot of people can learn from anyone who decides to share their experience in the comment section if you've had any experience in a sundown town how did it go um, how did you make sure you were safe? Any tips that we can use to stay safe? Please drop it in the comment section. And for every black person who's watching this, this does not is not limited to just our African-American brothers and sisters. I like to think that any black person who finds themselves in a place like that, your fate is going to be the same. The same thing that happens to any African-American in a sun downtown will happen to you if you find yourself in that situation so you guys please let me know what you think about this whole thing in the comment section did you know about sundown towns when did you find out about them have you had any experience in a sundown town how do you stay safe what are the tips please share in the comment section i'll definitely be reading and educating myself as well so thank you for watching please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't also turn on notifications that way youtube will let you guys know whenever i have a new video up and I will see you guys in my next video.